today we will talk a bit more about the kind of foundations of realization in terms of kind of a more simplistic or theoretical way of thinking of realization and how do you use that to design your next realization. So this is not like teach you how to use spreadsheets to create a bar chart, but say what makes a good bar chart. The point I want to make here is there's no kind of universally accepted framework or theory about what is a good validation. So to some extent, it's almost like art. There's still lots of, like I say, personal interpretation depends on particular data or user cases. Just as I assume there's no universal way of writing a good novel, people would have their own implementations, even there being centuries, people trying to do that. How is this computer science and not design then? Very good question. So actually, um, so data validation, just because it's nature, is kind of across a few different fields. So obviously, even within the computer science, it was related to computer graphics, which is more on the visual side, but also the human computer interaction in terms of how people use it. And in my work, actually, I see quite a few colleagues from the psychology or even neuroscience department, where so they're understanding the more fundamental thing, for example, in the human brain part, how would they see, react to different visuals. So it's kind of very cross discipline thing. So today I really just only want to cover graphics, which are the things, the video things you see on the screen. And it's composed of two parts. And one is called the marks and the other one called channels. These might be called different names in different contexts or discussions. And the concept here is probably the more important part. And so first, and marks, is what I would call data items. So let's assume you have a spreadsheet which lists all the products in the supermarket or shop. So each row is a product, which is an item. So these can be represented visually as a mark. And so you can imagine you can potentially use a point to represent one product, depends on what the validation is, maybe a line in a bar chart, a bar, or you can have more fancy representation for each product, and as say the shape or even 3D shape. You can have different dimensionality with the mark, but it's really represent one data item or one entity. So that's marks. And then the other one called the channels, which is the visual representation of the attributes of your item. So you could say, you can think about a product. It has, say, the name, the weight, and it will be associated with information like the sales or profits. These kind of I call attributes of the items. And usually it will be the columns in your spreadsheet. And these are the things you probably want to also include in your validation as well. So you want to show the product and then other information associated with the product, like the names, the price, the profit, and so on and so forth. And so a large part of the validation is just say mapping the attributes to the visual. So I say I want to show the price, then I can choose to use say the color or maybe the size to show the color. Then there's a choice there. And often there are more than one attributes you want to show, and then you have a choice between which one to use, which channel. Just taking a very simple example to explain this. Uh, so if this is like a scatter plot, and we have some showing the, some kind of product information, and we're showing the profits of each product, the sales of product, and then the type of product. So it's showing three attributes in the data. We are using a 2D graph, because and the color itself is not a spatial dimension. But also that's a usually actually a good thing because if you're not limited to spatial dimension, that means you can be on 3D. So you can go say five, six, seven, ten, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then back to the marks and channels. What are the marks here? Okay, the marks are the, uh, the type, the colors basically, is that right? Uh, I think that's the channel. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Okay. So marks is the, the dots, one. The dots themselves. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So the so marks represents each item. In, in this world will be the each product, which will be the dot. And then the channels, we already said oh, yeah. colors. Color and also yeah. will the place on the graph. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, more formally, we call these positions, basically X, Y coordinates or the positions. So this is, looks a little bit busy, but really it, show, it just says, okay, when I have some attributes that I want to show, for example, the price, what will be the best channel to show? Do I use position, color, or maybe 3D, or maybe tilted levels? Yeah. So I'm not going to go through the exact list, but generally what people did is did lots of experiments. 
For example, they want to find out whether use position is better or using color is better. So lots of small experiments, the pairwise comparison, they kind of eventually become this list. And it's not like an absolute order. For example, these two say either using the luminance or the grayscale or use the saturation level of the color, they have come similar level of effectiveness. So the third on the top is the more effective ones in general. At the bottom are the less effective ones in that particular order. So very quickly, say the position X, Y is actually very effective. And then say, for example, 3D shapes is usually not very good. So at least in the academic, there's a big part of the visualization research community think you probably should try to avoid 3D if you can, just because it's not very good at uh, representing. And also we have these two parts. So the left part is to represent numbers, basically. So these are type of data you can say, you represent, you show as numbers, say price, profit. And on the right hand side is the more categorical type of values. For example, different type of products. Say they have, they have distinction, but they you can't really do any operations. They are not usually a number. And again, so there's a limited number of channels usually can be used for different type. Depends on type of the attributes. The effectiveness is also a little bit different. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so this is people do experiment, try to understand how accurate a channel is. So each line you have is one channel. And then so this one would be the actual value, the x-axis, and the y-axis will be the perceived value. And so you can see uh, the purple line here is length, essentially similar to position. So the actual value is very similar to the user perceived values, so that, which is a good thing. So anything under this, for example, brightness, that means people underestimate. So if, for example, if you make twice as bright, and then people maybe only think it only increased by 50%. Whereas on this side, above this purple line, are the ones which people overestimate. And so what they include here is electric shock. So if you're increasing voltage by just a tiny bit, the people feeling is way, way more painful. Yeah, <laughs> you have a number there, which is 3.5 times more painful. But yeah, but I think the more important thing is just the kind of general thing you over or underestimate and also the important thing is you try to be in the middle as much as possible, that which gives you an accurate estimate. Otherwise, you have to kind of actively compensate for this, which is not what we usually do as human. Okay, and so this is the last one. So we're going to do a, one of these little experiments we mentioned earlier on, just to see how accurate we are as human and do we actually tend to over underestimate the visual representations. And so I have three representations here. So we all representing a number. So the first one I use color. So I use say the darker the color, the bigger the value. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask Richard to pick, say, do you think this one on the right is one and a half times bigger or darker or, or more saturated or, or twice or two and a half times more saturated compared to the color on the left? Um... So if you're trying this yourself, I would recommend trying not to think too long about it, overthink about it. Because when you usually look at the visualization, you would not think about is it accurate or not, or question your decisions. So just take your kind of instant and gut reaction and go with it. And I will show the answers after this, but uh, if you're interested, and you can put that in the comments, what do you think it should be? I'm going to say... Sorry, this is darkness, is it? Yeah, yeah. so darker I'd means say, more, I'd larger say, value. I'd say twice. Two. Two, okay. I'm going to do all of these three and then come back to okay. look at it, yeah? And then this one is using lens, so... I think that's two and a half times. Two and a half times, yeah. okay. And this one is area. The last one, 1.5, yeah. 1.5. Okay. But now I'm looking at it and I'm changing my mind straight away because... No, 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 don't think. So this is the important thing. So okay. the key here is not to think too much and use um, kind of your first intuition yeah. for reaction yeah. because yeah. And when you look at the actual data visualization, you probably would not to think about, mm, there really is. It just say you'll have some impression immediately and then that will be your answer. Most of the time you will not going to kind of carefully think about and question your choices.
So the answer is actually it's always twice. Oh, they're all twice. Always twice. Ah, okay. And so I mean, quite a few times people actually overestimate this part as well. So they think maybe it's more than twice darker than this. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, you can set the RGB values. But if you look at the here before, so the saturation is about here. So it's people tend to overestimate, and then the area is here. People tend to mm -hmm. underestimate. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So. Again, so it doesn't work for everyone. I think uh, even I do this in class, right? I have like sometimes close to 100 students. Each person would have slightly different accuracy for these channels. But, but in general, I think these are kind of much larger scales experiment with hundreds or even more people. Yeah. And it has been kind of revalidated afterwards as well. So that's okay. usually accurate. All the changes that it's made to the image, it now thinks that that is over 99% likely to being a coffee mug. Can you see the coffee mug there? If it is, it's, uh, it's definitely by one of the more abstract. The way we solve this is with something called a, a Bellman equation. So the Bellman equation describes how good a particular action choice is.